dear sisters and brothers we have begun another pastoral year in the life of this archdiocese under the theme you are my witnesses to be witnesses of our lord jesus is a call that all of us received on the day of our baptism this call defines all the aspects of our life and shapes our attitudes decisions and actions in one word it bestows on us the mission to proclaim the good news of jesus in every possible way to all people everywhere and at all times yes it is fundamentally a call that all the baptized received to be evangelizers bearers of the good news that god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life this only son of god became man and through his life death and resurrection made us heirs to eternal life as his disciples we have been entrusted with the duty to share this heavenly inheritance with others and to bring them to Christ that is why we must take seriously Christ's command to go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit the risen lord assures his disciples in the following words you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth pope francis underscores that as followers of christ we are not only his disciples but missionary disciples as missionary disciples we are called to bring the good news not only to those who never heard of christ our savior but also to those who are no longer actively practicing their faith to those members of the body of christ who have drifted away from the lord we could say that we are called to be both evangelizers and re-evangelizers last october at the express desire of our holy father pope francis we had celebrated the extraordinary missionary month october 2019 under the theme baptized and sent the church of christ on mission in the world we felt somehow then one month was too short a time for a thorough reflection on that important theme we therefore decided to carry forward this mission motif to the present pastoral year thus leading us to choose the theme you are my witnesses we believe that this theme is also a fitting expression of the missionary call of the church established by the lord hence our pastoral letter under this theme i will now proceed to share with you the general thrust of the letter my sharing today will be followed by another 10 sessions on this television channel given by various experts in the field they will help you to interiorize the message and to put it into practice in the nitty gritties of daily life but before those sessions begin you will need to first read the letter by yourselves either individually or in a family so that the sessions will do precisely what they are meant to do that is help you digest what you will take in by means of your personal reading it will be greatly helpful if you can already exchange with one another views about the content of the letter so that 
when the sessions come, you will be on familiar ground and perhaps also find answers to your questions. This letter revolves around three sub-themes or rather moments in the life of a mature missionary disciple. The first moment, the experience of the disciple's personal encounter with Jesus. The second moment, the radical transformation of the disciple's life. And the third moment, the resulting powerful testimony of the disciple's life, making him or her a robust witness of the Lord. The first moment, unless we have Jesus in us, we cannot share him with others. We all need, therefore, to experience a personal encounter with the Lord so that he becomes an integral part of our life and our relationship with him becomes firm and strong, bringing about a radical transformation in our life. The second moment, our pastoral letter brings to our mind the example of two well-known figures of the New Testament, the Samaritan woman at the well and Saul on the road to Damascus. After their encounter with Jesus, both of them gave up their old way of life. Their life was fully transformed. Such a transformation turns a sinner into a new creation, into the image of Jesus. Indeed, he becomes the embodiment of the mission of Jesus. What Pope Francis writes in his encyclical Evangelii Gaudium comes true in his or her life. I am a mission on this earth. That is the reason why I am here in this world. This cannot happen without a total transformation of life. The third moment, transformed persons are new persons. Renewed with the power of the Holy Spirit, they become vibrant witnesses of the good news. By their life and actions, speech and behavior, they effectively proclaim the Lord to the whole creation. Thankfully, much of what has been said above is already happening in the church, including in our archdiocese. Many of our faithful and faith groups are bearing an eloquent witness to Jesus. This task of witnessing to Jesus is also being carried forward enthusiastically through our various diocesan bodies, movements and apostolates. We must acknowledge that the disruption of normal life caused by the coronavirus pandemic and the consequent displacement of lakhs of workers, particularly from the migrant class, have given us special opportunities to be more creative in our witnessing and to exercise in wider dimensions the mandate of love given by our Master and Lord. Members of associations like St. Vincent de Paul Society, Legion of Mary, and of movements like the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, not to speak of hordes of enthusiastic parishioners, members of parish councils, youth associations, catechists, etc., have been tirelessly involved in bringing essential supplies and solace to thousands of people in distress. Doctors, nurses and other health workers have been permanent, permanently at the side of the COVID victims. Government servants and police personnel are stationed in high-risk locations, all at the service of the members of suffering humanity. All this activity bears testimony to the strong Christian formation that many of our brethren have received 
and who go on giving witness to Jesus. It gives us joy to acknowledge all these efforts. And as we thank our good God, we heartily congratulate our enthusiastic priests, religious and lay brethren, as well as our various centers and associations. Nevertheless, we need to continue bearing courageous witness to Jesus in as many ways as possible. The pastoral letter suggests ten concrete ways of doing so. As I said earlier, the CCR TV will telecast more sessions in order to illustrate and develop various points dealt with by our pastoral letter. My appearance on your television screen today is a kind of a curtain raiser. I earnestly desire that with the help of these television episodes, as well as with the other usual means and aids provided by our various centers throughout the year, you will be capable of making a significant difference in the lives of others through your enthusiastic life witness. For, as Pope Francis said in one of his homilies, Christianity is not a school of ideas or a collection of beautiful temples. It is a living people who follow Jesus and give witness to him every day. He was preaching at the feast of St. Stephen in the year 2014. And he reinforces his statement by saying, Christians who do not give to others the new life they have been given by Christ remain sterile. Brothers and sisters, let us listen to the Lord telling us once again, you are my witnesses. Let us not be sterile, but encourage one another and build each other up as we go on experiencing God's love and mercy through our community of faith, in our families, neighborhoods, and in our places of worship. Let us nurture our spiritual lives through prayer and through reflection on God's word so that we may be formed into true missionary disciples of Christ, witnessing to him through all that we do and say. We all have an extraordinary example of missionary discipleship in the life of Saint Joseph Vaz, the patron of our Archdiocese. Joseph Vaz shone like a bright star when he lived on this earth and three centuries later continues to shine forth as an outstanding witness to the marvels that God worked in his life. He was a staunch, committed and zealous apostle of Jesus who shared the love of the master through his inspired teaching and much more through his own personal life. One could say that he drank from the everlasting fount of life along with his mother's milk. His parents were a beacon of a life of holiness. They built their home on the foundation of the love of God and of neighbor, thus making their family into a model for the families in the neighborhood. Joseph Vaz got significantly enriched in such a home and in turn contributed to its enrichment. And at every stage of his life, he carried the torch of faith with which he illumined the, the earthly journey of countless human beings, followers of Christ, lapsed Christians, and followers of other faiths. Already as a child, he was known as the little saint. He displayed special enthusiasm in speaking of Jesus with his playmates and taught them Christian values in word and deed. 
Moved by his exemplary life, parents would constantly encourage their own children to emulate him. As a young man, Joseph Vaz studied at the College of St. Paul in Old Goa. Quite a few of his companions were treading on sinful paths. Joseph became a mirror of virtue for them and brought some of them back to the Master they had nearly left behind. Our patron was an exceptional guardian of the faith. Some Catholics in Sri Lanka, deprived of proper leadership, had begun frequenting places of worship in other religions. Many young people were growing without faith. Joseph Vaz gave everything up to serve such lost sheep and to strengthen the faith of that dying church. Sri Lankans at the time of our saint professed many religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Calvinism and Catholicism. Father Vaz took the initiative to begin a dialogue with them. He respected their indigenous customs and cultures and adapted the best of them to the practice of Catholicism. He does witness to Jesus through their own cultural language, and he gathered a fruitful harvest. He would engage in open and fruitful dialogue with the leaders and people of various religions, and thereby became a shining witness, an ardent missionary disciple. Sisters and brothers, having such an outstanding leader in missionary discipleship from our own ranks, let us march forward under his inspiration to be loyal and enduring witnesses to our faith everywhere and at all times. Last but not the least, as we keep praying that this unprecedented novel coronavirus pandemic comes to an end and that we are saved from a frightful contagion, let us learn on the other hand to spread a contagion of hope from person to person so that we may be found worthy of being joyful witnesses to Christ who through his powerful closeness to us is able to transform our fears into lasting hope. May God bless us and give us all a truly fruitful new pastoral year.